So you want to use the Stamina Dragonite, but what works? In this video, I'm going to show you just that. Hey guys, it's Dan, and welcome back to Unified Gaming. So what is this build all about? This is a PvP Stamina Dragonite build for the current patch, and it is a 2H and Bow build. You can change the Bow to Sword and Shield should you wish. As with this build, it is pretty tanky, has decent damage and relatively okay sustain. So all in all is well rounded. Now I'm going to show on screen the superstar of the build so you can see everything you need and then break it down in much more detail. So if you do like this, then do like, comment and subscribe for more content and a big shout out to all the people on Patreon who help make these videos possible and get early access. As with our race, we are a Nord on this build. A Nord gives you health and just loads of resistances, plus ultimate generation. All in all, it's a pretty solid race. It's not the best, it's not the worst, but it's pretty solid. This build can be played with many races, such as Dark Elf, Argonian even because of the healing passives, but personally I'd go with a Dark Elf or a Nord or even a Wood Elf for sustain if you find that tricky. As with our attributes, we have 24 in health and 40 in stamina, and we're trying to hit 30,000 health give or take, and about 27,000 plus stamina as well. My stam regen is at 1000, but when I use my rally, it does go up to 1100, so it's pretty low for most people. You can change this, however, with a glyph or two, and bear in mind you do get ultimate back when you, uh, sorry, resources back when you use your ultimate, and we have lots of ults generation. We are using the Steed Mundus for more speed, which is incredibly useful, so I would highly recommend this for any DK. If you don't have this, then you can change um, and use a mythic like the Wild Hunt or use some um, swift traits on the jewelry, but that does cost you quite a bit of money and it's a bit awkward. So this is just kind of a quick dirty fix, but it does the job. As for our consumables and food, I'm using Bewitch Sugar Skulls. This is just dry stack basically and some health regen. We mainly use this for the resources as we need all pools. And potion wise, if you're not new to the channel, then you know that I'm going to say try potions because they cover everything. Or you could use Essence for movability, which very similar, but loads and loads of kind of just goodness for a DK. So this is really good to help you being stunned and stuff and land your combos. So these two potions are pretty much best in slot. I would use Essence of Movability for Cyrodiil personally, as getting stunned is pretty punishing and you can die if you get multiple people hitting you really quick. As with kind of the skills, it's your pretty standard DK skills. On the front bar, we're using Dizzy and Swing, Noxious Breath, Executioner, Venomous Claw, Rally, and Take Flight. On the back bar, we have Volatile Armor, Coagulating Blood, Resolve and Vigor, Fragmented Shield, and Poison Arrow. This would be morphed to Poison Injection, but I haven't got it up just yet. And I'm using Magma Armor, which will be changed to Corrosive Armor once I get some more skill points. If you wish to change this build up, you can drop the bow completely and use Sword and Shield if you wish but you will then have to put Plague Break on the front bar, which you've probably seen already, and the, it just makes it a bit more awkward. As with kind of the armor and stuff, it's pretty much what it says in the tin. It's Vate 2H, this is loads of damage, and it's a big burst hit when it procs, so just great. Double Dot Poisons to just have that damage over time, and Plague Break on the back bar. This gives us just an extra dot, which can just explode when people cleanse and stuff, so it's quite useful. And it procs with all the DK passes for more and more sustain. So a really good go-to set. We then pair this with Bloodspawn and Daedric Trickery. I personally have Trickery and Jewelry, or three, infused. I have Weapon Damage, Weapon Damage, and Stam Regen. If you need more recovery though, you can go with more just Stam Regen and you're good to go. And then Plague Break, I tried to keep on the back bar, so that way I can light attack to proc this or poison ejection. This will put plague break on somebody with the bow, and then I could be on the front bar using my Vate to 2H quite reliably and quite consistently. The Daedric Trickery we have on the body, all five pieces active, so this means we always get this bonus, which is incredibly useful. And it's speed, major protection, healing or healing, basically healing done or healing taken, and major heroism, which is more alt gen. So with this set and Bloodspawn and being an Nord, we have really high uptime of our leap, which gives us even more sustain. And that's why this build works so well. As for the CP, I've actually taken it all off, but just a few notable stars should you wish. Um, you typically want to go for direct damage. So Master at Arms, 
the damage over time one thaumaturge is pretty good as well and then for pvp you want to get jeweler's rebuff or if you go inside Steven death you can get ironclad which is really good as well for the red ones it is more up to you in all honesty i would suggest getting bastion and this only is because it gives you more damage against shielded enemies and there's lots of sorcerers in Cyrodiil currently so this really helps kind of just make your dots more punishing to them beyond that you can kind of go with what you need i really like to use um Celestry, i think it's pronounced which is around here somewhere this gives you movement speed which is really nice and dk can be quite slow as for the other red ones it is personal choice but having some of the juggernaut type ones are quite good or there's one that gives you more sustain, survival instincts, or one that reduces the damage taken when you have lots of dots on you. So there's lots and lots of options here really for you. As with the green ones, it is personal choice. I would personally suggest going Steed's Blessing just for more movement speed. It's just out of combat and riding your horse and stuff. And then I, would, I try to save money really, so liquid deficiency or ration is good. And I just go over all the horse ride and stuff at the top left. So gifted rider and war mount. But that is the build, guys. It is pretty short and sweet and simple. The only kind of thing really left to cover is should you be a vampire or not? Now, I was a vampire originally on this build. And then the downside is that you get loads of cost increases and our sustain is pretty low as it is. And so we can't really afford to run that skill reliably, like just the passives and stuff. So yes, you get more tankiness and it is really useful, but you do have to sacrifice damage for that in order to fix the sustain. So if you find you're a bit squishy and you want more survivability, then I would suggest going Vampire Stage 3 and changing a glyph or two to be stamina recovery to help fix that. But all in all, that's the build. Now, I'd like to know what you think of this and this format. Do you like having the kind of summary at the front and then the kind of detailed information and yeah on a side note as well i will be streaming on twitch in probably saturday so most saturdays i do and i'll be creating new builds live so you can see it all there but i'm going to wrap this video up here so i'm going to say thanks for watching a massive thank you to all the people on patreon who help make these videos possible and if you want to support myself and the channel there's details all down below as much or as little as you can it all really really helps but I'm going to catch you in the next video. So take care, guys. Thanks for watching and bye.